I speak a little bit of Australian, but I mostly speak English. I call this build Bruce. <laughs> this is a this is Bruce the mate. That's what we're building right now. This is the Azrock M8, or I'm just going to call it the mate because that's what that's. I mean, that's how people sign things, you right? I mean, they, they they sign them with mate. So, what you've been playing with the Azrock mate? They're probably going to. Yes. I hope they don't really want us to call it the M8 because that that's the mate. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about this. You did a build in this, and uh, you've been able to play with this a little bit. Out of the box, what do you get? Okay, out of the box, this is a bare bone system, but it comes with a lot of stuff. It comes with an optical drive, a power supply, a motherboard, um, some little accessory things. Um, it's got a memory card reader that's built into the case, um, and uh, it's got sort of an OLED, like this front panel button thing is actually an OLED screen. The ASRock software for this is called a command with g sensor integrated which is basically just fancy talk for it'll tell you the time and there's an internal light that it'll turn on and off until you boot into windows and then windows can talk to it over i think a usb connection and then in windows you've got control over overclocking and fan speed and it'll tell you what the current cpu utilization is and what the volume is and things like that also on yeah, the front, we, have, we have the front panel memory card and then headphone and microphone yeah, the front panel memory card reader is hidden behind, like, there's a little hidden door at the bottom. Um, and uh, there's four USB 3 ports on the front and then a slot load DVD rewriter. The yeah. front panel headphone connector is uh, has a high-quality headphone preamp, and it's designed for 250-ohm headphones. And uh, that's also really nice. If you're taking this from point A to point B, you'll be able to take your, your fancy set of headphones um, and uh, game with quality, quality yeah, sound. This is this is basically just a, a fancy ITX case. It's a completely standard ITX case that has a cool little button with the uh, OLED screen and, you know, the memory card reader. But otherwise, it's a completely standard ITX system. All right, so let's go through what you've done to this. And uh, I guess while we're talking along the way, we can talk about all the different stuff that you can fit into this um, and just talk about, you know, the build. So with the side popped off, you've got the motherboard, which is, you know, pretty unobstructed. Um, first thing you notice is this thing takes laptop RAM as opposed to desktop RAM. Um, and there's this weird shroud around the video card. Like normally where you put the video card, it's actually got a riser. It's like a 90 degree right angle adapter. And that's how they get a full size, full length video card in here that is in a case that's only about 4.9 inches tall. And so there's not many cases out on the market that um, are doing this, but I think with the, the Steam OS coming out very soon, we're going to see a lot of cases uh, and a lot of manufacturers start to develop uh, solutions that are very similar to this. Slim units that are either, t you know, tall or, you know, made to lay down flat, but also have the, um, the L bracket for the PCI Express. I went ahead and installed Ubuntu 13.04 just to see what the driver support was like. And to my surprise, everything worked. Hmm, like everything, right? Just all the devices are working just fine. Yeah, the sound card worked. The uh, I didn't try Bluetooth. Uh, the wireless worked. I was most impressed by that because it hopped right onto my AC network and seemed like it was getting pretty good throughput. Didn't do any formal benchmarking yet, but uh, the the DVD ROM there were no problems with SATA. I mean that's not really expected because it's a C87 chipset. But basically from the Ubuntu CD everything seemed to work. There's uh, two radios in it and that helps it a lot. So it's got two receive and two transmit. Radios, they make a big deal about it on the on the paperwork. I, I'm not really sure, but I hopped on the AC wireless network here at the office. Uh, the AC wireless network here at the office is supported by uh, Ubiquiti, uh, in this case, a Ubiquiti AC access point, um, and it, it worked really well. I was able to transfer things um, at, well, like 400, 450 megabits, something like that, just dragging files back and forth. Now, can you remove that and install, like, a half-height... Um you know, MSATA or a half-height PCI Express, uh, you know, like hard drive or something like that? You could install a half-height PCI Express adapter card to get a 1X PCI slot, but um, uh, MSATA and things like that are not an option. But yeah. it does have six SATA ports, and you can actually fit six SATA devices in this case, which is completely nuts. So let's count them down here. You've got the optical drive. Uh, that's, that's one. one right. And then we Next got to the, the optical drive, there's a two-and-a-half-inch slot. Mm -hmm. And then underneath the video card, there is an adaptable drive bay. Underneath the video card, you can have one three and a half inch drive, or there's a bracket that'll let you put four two and a half inch drives there. And there's power cables to support all that. So one three and a half or four two and a half. Well, why would it, why the hell would anybody want to put a uh, you know a, 
three and a half in there is beyond me unless they've got like an old <laughs> one. But you actually put a three and a half inch drive into yours just to test out the heat. Yeah, we put a not just any three and a half inch drive. We put a Velociraptor in there. <laughs> the drive that runs so hot it comes with its own heat sink. <laughs> you have to could call Doctor Who to go back in time to get one of these or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it turns out that uh, it makes a lot of heat, and uh, you know, I, we sort of suspected that this case might have heat issues because it's you know it's four seventy millimeter fans, and so we used the hard drive. The Ada sixty four is the benchmark utility we use, and we we turned up. We told it to you know burn in test GPU, CPU, hard drive, the whole nine yards. And it got pretty toasty. All right, so let's talk about that now that we have like you said four seventy millimeter fans. Seventy millimeter fans usually are pretty loud, but this. I mean, it's a small form factor, so there's going to be some sacrifices there. Now, default, these are running at 800 RPM, and that's not too bad, but running at 100, how do they sound? Running at 100, it sounds like a vacuum cleaner. That's the sound of 100%. Well, uh, it, so it turns out that um, the fans at 100% are really loud, and the thing will still overheat even if the fans are at 100% in the default fan configuration here. Check out this fan diagram that we got from ASRock. I, I tried this in desktop and tower. It seemed to be a little worse in a tower configuration, but that might have just been statistical noise because it was only a couple of degrees. But So you got four fans, two configured as intake, two configured as exhaust at opposite ends of the case. And in with Ada 64 running everything flat plank, it would overheat in about 30 minutes, 45 minutes every time. In some cases, we got it to overheat after about 15 minutes. But uh, it's really weird. You know, the the GPU that we're using in this is an EVGA um, GTX 770. It's the it's the uh, the overclock edition, so it's got the dual fans as with opposed the to like cooling the, unit, right? It's the one you painted white. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the that's the one. And so it kind of seemed like the top exhaust fan was maybe fighting with the first fan on that video card. So I reversed the fans so that they were all exhausting, exhausting out the bottom and exhausting out the top. And that draws in cold air from the back that immediately dropped the internal temperature of the case by about 20 degrees C. So can you, I mean, can you see any configuration where it may actually work with the in and out on both the top and the bottom? Yeah, I think that if the bottom fans were configured for in and the top fans were configured for out, that would probably also work as well, although it wouldn't draw air in from the back. Um, the video card, depending on the video card that you have, the video card that you have may be designed to exhaust air out the back completely. That's like the stock AMD coolers are pretty much designed to do that. Um, in our case, the ACX cooler exhausts uh, hot air out the back and the top edge of it. And so I think having our uh, our top fans configured for exhaust is a win-win, always. Just pulling um, the, just pulling the heat, the hot air off of the GPU because the GPU is blowing straight down and it's dissipating heat in almost all directions from the GPU. So it's just pulling it away, all that hot air away. Yeah, and it, that seemed to work really well. We wrote Azrock to ask them about that, and they said that they thought the default fan configuration would be okay, but. Um, Running the fans at 100% with that fan configuration, the system did not overheat anymore on Ada 64. Couldn't get it to overheat. It got warm, but it didn't overheat. Also, it, um, go ahead. It's probably possible to um, run the fans not at 100% and still not experience overheating. And I don't think that you would over... I, I think in either case, you could make the argument that in the default fan configuration under normal workloads, you're not going to experience an overheating. But in the other configuration, I think that the system would run cooler and quieter than it does with the stock configuration. But you, that's something you need to look at and experiment with. I also want to note that, I mean, 99% of the stuff that you do on your computer at home is not going to tax the system like an 8064 stress test is going to. Gaming and that sort of thing is not going to be anywhere close to as, as or not going to put anywhere near as much stress on the CPU and, and the other components. Uh, so just take that into consideration as well. A to 64 is like the worst case scenario for your system, but it's good to test with because 
if you know that the system works using that, it's going to work with pretty much anything. Yeah, I'm actually very impressed with the with the fans configured the way I want them configured. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't see a problem with it. I think the system's really it's really solid. It's a really solid value. You know, if you take the components and you look at how much it's going to cost for a decent 80 plus bronze power supply and some of the other accessories in here, you still have a little bit of a premium on the price. The parts are a little more expensive than you're than you're going to pay retail. But you get, you know, if you like the BMW Group's design, it's a pretty slick design. It's a super portable machine. These handles are metal. This case feels really super sturdy. This locking mechanism on the top, when you lock it, the sides are locked in place. So if you're swinging this around like a crazy person, the sides aren't going to fly off because they're held in place magnetically. Yeah, but your internal components may not may not per- appreciate that very much, especially a, a heat sink or something that's not secured uh, fully. All right, let's talk about the maximum stuff here. Now, the maximum VGA dimensions are um, 290 millimeters by 137 millimeters by 43.5 millimeters in thickness. Um, the maximum supported TDP for that is 200 watts. So just take that into consideration. The uh, max supported TDP for the power for the um, not the power supply the graphics card is 200 watts, but you can do a lot with this because it, it does have 450 actually, watts. Actually, it says that it, the recommended is 200 watts. The yeah. 770 is 220, and the 780 is 250, and they assure me that that a 780 will work in here. So it's like this is uh, the newer revision of this supports up to a 780, a 250 watt TDP. All right, the uh, dimensions yeah. of the case in millimeters are 372 by 123 by 400. The CPU cooler, you've got a little over um, a little over three inches clearance. Like I, I wouldn't use a CPU cooler taller than about 3.5, but I think that you, there's a Noctua cooler that's about 3.7 inches, and I think you could get away with that one. But that would that's that's pushing it. Uh, this one does have the Creative Sound Core 3D on board, and that supports EAX. I guess it supports one to five. Uh, and it also has a premium headphone amplifier, which is something I'm pretty excited about. It works with the front port, and here's how this works. Uh, if you've got a fancy pair of headphones uh, that, that have like a lot of resistance, we're talking like 250 ohms, you can plug that up and it will power those headphones. Normally, you'd need a separate uh, digital audio converter or, no, no, I'm sorry, a separate headphone amplifier. Uh, you can get a DAC with an amplifier altogether, but this one, it's doing everything for you. Yeah, it's cool. It's designed for 250 ohm. Yeah, I mean you can pl- you can plug 600 ohm headphones in there. You just don't you won't be able to make them as loud. That's that's going to be the thing because they they offer more resistance. But it's it's pretty cool uh, that they have that in there. Also, it's got the scout mode for all you cheaters. <laughs> scout mode allows you to hear people that are coming before you normally would be able to. It, it I don't know how it does it. It like looks into the game and like says, hey, someone's coming over there. Let's let's bring up the volume on that. I I don't know, but it's witchcraft. And if you use it, you're a bad person. But it's on this, so some the people who do use that and want to use it are excited right now. This is a great land party machine. It's got uh, the back of it's also got a design, which is pretty cool. So it'll it'll work. It's reversible. It also comes with rubber feet, so you can use it in a desktop configuration. Um, but it's Steam OS, like Steambox, home theater PC, uh, portable gaming rig, land machine, whatever. It's fine. And I'm sort of a guy who needs like six monitors, and with this. EVGA card plus the onboard video, I can drive six monitors from this thing. So six monitors on that tiny little thing. Yes. I was driving six monitors the other day with my Xbox One. <laughs> Said no one ever. <laughs> all right. So, I mean, are there any more specs on the motherboard you want to go into? We mentioned the all the. It's a special ports. motherboard. It's a Z87. It's not. Really, it's ITX, but it's made exactly for this chassis. So the model number of the motherboard is the Z87 M8 from Azrock. So you, can, can you go out and just buy that motherboard by itself? I mean, or you no. have to get it with this one, right? Yes. Hmm. But yeah. it doesn't have anything proprietary that I can tell. There's no proprietary power connector. There's no proprietary anything else. The only thing that's slightly weird is that it takes notebook RAM. We've got some ADATA notebook RAM. This thing is configured with an ADATA SX910 uh, and the Velociraptor in, in a caching configuration because Haswell does that really well. And that's a really cool thing to do. I mean... You could put a two, three, four, six terabyte hard drive in here, three and a half inch mechanical, with an SSD for caching, and have something that's super performant. Or you could go nuts and put, you know, five hard drives in here, and then tell all your friends, "It's like, yeah, this, this thing's got five hard drives in it. That's completely <laughs> nuts." Or, or you could put five uh, SSDs in RAID five. Yes, you, you you, it's you could literally use every SATA port on the thing. It comes with short S- SATA cables just that are made just for this case, so that's really convenient. You could you could deck this thing out if you wanted to. 
And I'm really happy with the build that they put in here. If you're kind of intimidated by building a computer and you don't know and blah, 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 this would actually be a pretty good choice because you could just buy this, get a RAM processor, storage, and a video card, and you're done. Well, you don't even really have to get a video card unless you really want to play games at the highest settings. I mean, the Haswell onboard video is kind of whatever, but you can play like indie games and that sort of thing and, and games from a couple of years ago, but I would not play any new games on it. But if you, if you just wanted something, you know, that looks kind of cool for your office, you know, maybe you've got a creative firm or something and you want something that's different, you can get this and you won't even need to get a graphics card, you know, and you save a little money there, but that, that's an option. Yeah, for a home theater machine that you're going to have, you know, all your emulators on and you're, you know, when you put in a DVD, it automatically rips it and stores it. You don't need a video card. This is the perfect machine. If you guys are getting one of these, uh, let us know what you're going to be doing with it. Uh, also, if you guys value these videos, please consider becoming a member of Tech Support. Wear it like a badge of pride on our forum. It really helps us keep, um, you know, the videos coming. And it also is going to help us in the next year improve our quality. Maybe do some different things, some documentaries. Who knows what's going to be coming up in the next year. But you guys are helping out a lot more than you know. So it's really just, it's great to have you guys as a community. So enough of that garbage. Go to the forum. Uh, hang out there. Post your questions there. And uh, we will see you next time.